Welcome to Policy On Demand. I'm Andrew Pryor. It's the week of April 3rd, and this is your Monday briefing. The House and Senate have departed for a two-week spring recess and are scheduled to return the week of April 17th. Recent developments in the banking sector have affected monetary policy discussions and market ex- expectations about the future. Joining us to share his insights on the potential impact of these developments is Carl Russo. Carl, welcome. Thank you for having me, Andrew. So, Carl, what impact do you see uh, recent developments having on economic activity and on monetary policy? Well, as banks reassess the conditions in the banking sector for their own balance sheets, we may see them try to shore up their own finances, perhaps by holding on deposits by raising interest rates that they're paying, uh, but also to tighten lending standards for both businesses and consumers. And the Fed thinks that that's likely to weigh on economic activity. As a result of that, the Fed may not need to increase interest rates as aggressively as uh, may have been the case otherwise. And so markets actually expect that the Fed will um, be a little bit uh, more reluctant to go as high as they may have been or as uh, and may actually lower rates before the end of this year. Uh, On the consumer side of things, uh, we did have a more recent consumer confidence survey come out about 10 days after. Uh, the bank failure, so it may not fully reflect all of the consumer assessment of the situation, but consumers are slightly more pessimistic about current conditions, uh, but a little bit more optimistic about the longer run future. All right. So you mentioned the Federal Reserve and monetary policy, but is there any impact you see uh, that this might have on, on the congressional agenda going forward? Yeah, so on the legislative front, uh, the House and the Senate both held uh, hearings uh, in recent weeks with some discussion on whether existing legislation provide or existing regulation provides sufficient tools uh, for regulators or whether and they just weren't used or whether that they need uh, more regulation might be in order Uh, on uh, introduced legislation. We had a bipartisan bill was introduced by Senators Warren, Holly, Cortez Masto and Braun. Uh, that would give regulators the ability to claw back compensation of executives in the five years preceding a bank insolvency or an FDIC resolution. Uh, And that would require also shareholders of bank holding companies of an institution that receives FDIC support uh, to pay back and bear some of the losses uh, associated with that. So we are beginning to see, uh, even as the regulatory side is uncertain, a little bit movement perhaps on the legislative side. The question will be whether it's sufficient to have a vehicle to move forward. Uh, with any of those proposals. Good. So, Carl, given these uncertain times, what can companies be doing to protect themselves and their shareholders? Yeah, so companies that plan for the rain while the sun is still shining uh, will fare best when the environment changes. Uh, And so a company can undertake scenario modeling right now uh, to see how different macroeconomic conditions that may be common to all companies interact with their company-specific uh, risks and then stress test their own projections about the future. Uh, the companies that do that, I think, will be well-equipped to take advantage of any unexpected opportunities that may arise as a result of the uncertainty uh, and also have contingency plans for any unexpected threats. Excellent. Well, Carl, thanks as always for, for sharing your insights. Well, thank you for having me, Andrew. Be sure to check out the latest Week in Review with Janice Mays, included in the description of this episode. And stay tuned for a special episode on the proposed regulations on the Clean Vehicles Tax Credit and this Friday's Week in Review. As always, thank you for spending this time with us. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.